cherished Holocaust survivors, Prime Minister, other dignitaries and guests, as well as our live streaming audience. Bonjour, good morning, Shalom Aleichem Quay. My name is Lawrence Wall from CBC Radio here in Ottawa. Je suis honoré d'être votre hôte pour la cérémonie d'aujourd'hui pour marquer la journée internationale dédiée à la mémoire des victimes de l'Holocauste, ici au Monument National de l'Holocauste, près de Centre-Ville d'Ottawa. I want to acknowledge that the land on which we've gathered is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabeg people. The United Nations has designated this day, January 27th, as International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It marks the Liberation Day in 1945 of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest Nazi concentration camp and death camp. Plus d'un million d'hommes de femmes et d'enfants innocents sont allés à la mort pendant cette période terrible. We have many guest speakers this morning, and we're outside with the temperature minus 10 degrees with some light snow falling in Ottawa, so let's begin. And would you please be seated? I'd like to invite Elder Verna McGregor from the Kitigan Zibi Anishinaabeg First Nation to offer a blessing. Elder McGregor. Hello, everybody. Kwekakina. Bonjour, tout le monde. For an indigenous cause, Kitagon Zibi and Donja Bawag, or Snedodem, a Shetanum Kipanesi. I'd like to welcome you here today and honor all of you and uh, on National Holocaust Day. Uh, before we started, I did a little smudge, and the smudge is still going, which is really, too, as well. It's, uh, it represents strength. Uh, why we smudge is that um, it's our connection from the physical world to the unseen world, to our ancestors. So we're sending up good, good thoughts and prayers, and that's why I, I needed to smudge this morning here. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our traditional unceded lands, and I always talk about the significance of Ottawa. And it's, uh, this was an important meeting place for us because it's the confluence of the rivers coming together from the four directions. And we'd meet here and talk about what's going on on the land. And um, so it's similar to the medicine wheel. And at the center of the medicine wheel, it represents balance. And uh, I'll just, I just forgot to get it here. <coughs> so again, to... Uh, we always talked about, uh, the elders talked about the avoidance of war on Turtle Island. We called North America Turtle Island. And the significance of the medicine wheel was a reminder to that uh, it represents the four directions, the four seasons, but the four colors of people on this earth. And the reminder or symbolism of that is regardless of our skin color, our beliefs, our history, our understandings, what binds us together is that we all share this earth. And as the two, two-legged, we have a bigger responsibility to look after the next future generations and that and all our relatives. And that's not just human relatives. It's all, all the animals, the plants, the birds. So on that note, I'm going to say a little prayer to honor all of you coming together today. I also have the tobacco, and the significance of that was it was the first gift given to us, and it's part of protocol when you ask uh, for ceremony or if you harvest something from, from the earth. And, and before I start my prayer, too, as well, what I do, too, as well, is I brought maple syrup today. And I said, why did I bring maple syrup? Because one of the teachings here, if you look at today, it's very cold. Uh, we would say, how many, it means how old are you, but really the translation is how many winters you did you survive? Because the winters were very harsh and a lot of our 
relatives didn't make it through the winter. So one of the teachings of the syrup, maple syrup, was that it was a gift from spirit to remind the people to not forget about the sweetness of life when we go through tragedies such as the Holocaust. So on that note, I, I uh, say miigwech. Onje ni gash kito chuma ondo se konche nongo mwamika kina pumadzijik. Shwen rishnoni na wigis kije monido. Miigwech onje kakina gagijen da nonje mwam de gen in de kimenan. Shka kikwe jin kason in de kimenan. Wido kwa kakina pumadzijik onje nagdo wabdan kakina gujin in de kimenan. Mwam de gen nishna beya ki. Miigwech onje kakina ete kish gong kizis. Tipi kizis is shichin nang shak. We don't go. I am an alchemist. No, no, Jay, no, no, I've done cooking a good year. Nebi, nebi, pang, sing, see, be, sigh, and kachiga gum. Migwa, John Jay, ya, ish, good day. Kagi, me, Jin, Chimino, up to Toyang. We don't go cooking up, mom, the gain in a walk on Jay, no, no, I've done cooking a good ish, good day. Migwa, John Jay, the seven. Kagi, me, Jin, Chimino, Pumatsian. We don't go cooking up. Mom, the gate does your cause a jig, mom, we are COVID 19, a shit cooking now, or cause a win. We don't quack cooking on in Gino and Doganug. Mom, the gate never shows the non, the cook was non, a shit, the double no G shuck, a shit cooking nug, a gish and don, a wet sea suck. Pumis with jig, pumma de gay jig, pumu de gay jig, cooking no good. Can't just squat negway de semen, keg of a gem on a doshit, can't a notch gush negway de semen. We don't quack cooking now, mom, the gay and Gami God work, Mommy, your Holocaust is in card again. Mia, me guetch, me guetch, me guetch, me guetch. Me guetch is thank you, merci. And I say it four times to honor the four directions, the four seasons, the four colors of people, and that may we live in peace, even though this is trying times. What we call peace in Algonquin is Wanakiwan, meaning we, peace, it comes from the richness of the land. And so uh, I honor you today and I say miigwech. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech, Elder McGregor. Our next speaker is Annette Wildgoose. She is the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and a member of the National Holocaust Monument Committee. Annette, s'il vous plaît. Merci beaucoup, Lawrence. Thank you. Au nom du Comité de Monument National de Holocaust, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à la cérémonie de la Journée internationale de souvenirs de Holocaust. Merci beaucoup pour votre présence ce matin. A special thank you to our distinguished speakers, to the diplomatic community, parliamentarians, elected officials, and the general public who are so well represented here today. Every year, the United Nations designates a theme for the International Holocaust Remembrance Day. This year, it is home and belonging. I am reminded personally of what this means, as my grandfather, Moritz Meister, and his son, Alphonse, my uncle, both perished in Auschwitz-Birkenau. All other members of my mum's family perished in Majdanek. Six million is a difficult statistic to comprehend. But when we can put even one name behind a number, then it brings it closer to home, and that unfortunately, the reality of belonging has become forever fractured. Ottawa a eu un groupe de survivants de Holocaust qui ont travaillé tellement fort depuis des années à éduquer les gens sur l'Holocaust. Cette journée est pour eux. I'd like to recognize Dr. Agnes Klein, who is with us representing Holocaust survivors. In closing, I would like to also acknowledge our partners in the delivery of this ceremony this morning. 
Yad Vashem Toronto, the Central Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs, the Jewish Federation of Ottawa, the Center for Holocaust Education and Scholarship, the Embassy of Israel, the National Capital Commission, and excuse me, I have to thank you for clearing the snow. You have no idea how that kept me up at night. Uh, this is remarkable. Thank you, a special shout out there. Um, Heritage Canada, the City of Ottawa, and the many volunteers who showed up this morning. I am reminded that the we is stronger than the I. Encore une fois, merci à vous tous pour votre contribution et votre participation à la cérémonie de la Journée internationale de souvenirs de Holocaust. Merci beaucoup. J'aimerais inviter le Premier ministre, le très honorable Justin Trudeau, au podium. Prime Minister, if you please. Hello, bonjour, shalom. Thank you, Annette, for your remarks, and Elder McGregor for your blessing. Je suis ici aujourd'hui en compagnie du ministre Hussein et d'autres ministres, de l'ambassadeur Hoffman d'Israël et d'autres ambassadeurs, du chef de l'opposition Pierre Polièvre et d'autres parlementaires, du rabbin Cher, du maire Sutcliffe et d'autres distingués amis. On this day, 78 years ago, the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp was liberated. 7,000 people walked out of the gates of the infamous Nazi concentration camp, but they left behind the memory of 1.1 million fellow captives who were killed there, a number greater than the entire population of Ottawa. Ces morts font partie des 6 millions de personnes juives qui ont été perdues pendant l'Holocauste. Le régime nazi a systématiquement assassiné des millions d'autres personnes en raison de leur nationalité, de leurs opinions politiques et de leur sexualité. Dans certains cas, c'était simplement parce que c'était des personnes en situation de handicap. In times of peace, we shake our heads and look back at this atrocity, bewildered at how it could ever have been permitted to happen. We wonder what could ever have driven people to such cruelty. But hate never overtakes us all at once. It creeps up inch by inch. Lately, we have seen hateful and anti-Semitic rhetoric coming from dark corners of our society. Canadians were horrified to see Nazi flags brought to Ottawa last year. It had a chilling effect. Hate is being amplified online and on other platforms. And so we cannot and must not be complacent. All Canadians, especially those of us here who are leaders, need to stand up and call it out plainly and loudly. On doit faire preuve d'une vigilance absolue face à la haine et face aux propos antisémites, racistes ou haineux de toutes sortes. Et on doit dénoncer tout effort visant à nier l'un des moments les plus sombres de l'histoire de l'humanité. C'est pourquoi le Canada a modifié le code criminel pour interdire la négation ou la minimisation de l'Holocauste. Si on ne reconnaît pas la vérité sur le passé, on risque de voir les horreurs de l'Holocauste se répéter. As time progresses, we have fewer and fewer Holocaust survivors who can share the truth of what happened to them and the atrocities they witnessed firsthand. We are all grateful to be able to hear from survivor Dr. Klein today. 
it is more important than ever that we hear, tell, and remember the stories, the stories of all the victims of the Holocaust at Auschwitz, at Treblinka, at Belzec, at Sobibor, at Chelmo, and across Europe. It should be troubling for us all that so many young people haven't heard or don't understand what happened during the Holocaust. Our government has made historic investments to support community institutions across the country that educate Canadians about the reality of the Holocaust in Vancouver, in Winnipeg, in Toronto, and in Montreal. During the Holocaust, the forces of hatred and violence tried to erase millions of voices. By supporting organizations like these and attending events like today's, we are, in fact, amplifying those voices so they resonate for generations more. We are making sure, as Jews and non-Jews alike, that never again means never again. We are illuminating the truth and proving, once again, that light is always more powerful than darkness. Thank you all for being here today. Merci. Merci, Monsieur Trudeau. Our next speaker is the Honorable Ahmed Hussain. He's the Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion. M Minister, if you please. Good afternoon. Bonjour tout le monde. Shalom. On this solemn day, we come together to remember the more than six million Jewish men, women, and children, and millions of other victims who were murdered in the Holocaust by the Nazi regime. We remember the hundreds of thousands of Romani, uh, Romani and Sinti who were killed and persecuted by the Nazis. We will never forget the countless others who suffered the atrocities of the Nazi regime. Today, we also mark 78 years since the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau. The inhumane and evil acts that took place there and throughout the Holocaust were indeed horrific, and it remains to this day and forever as a dark chapter in the history of humanity. You know, we were told earlier that it's difficult to comprehend the number six million. I think one of the most powerful ways to bring that home is to study the stories of the different victims and survivors of the Holocaust. And they're represented through all walks of life, children, parents, uh, musicians, artists, regular people uh, living their lives all throughout Europe. And their stories really bring home uh, the truth of the Holocaust. And in the face of growing anti-Semitism and Holocaust de denial, both here and at home and around the world, we must we must stand united. We must stand united against anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. We must stand united against the forces of hate and darkness that spread falsehoods, including Holocaust denial and distortion. And we cannot and we will not let the truth of the Holocaust be distorted or dismissed or denied. Let me be very clear. Anti-Semitism and hate in any of its forms have absolutely no place in Canada. And our government has and will continue to remain steadfast in our commitment to fight anti-Semitism every day. The Honorable Erwin Kotler has done and continues to do so much work as Canada's special envoy on preserving Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism. And we are honored that he continues to work so hard in this really critical and important role. We are proud to have him in this role as we tackle this issue together. And as part of our endearing commitment to remembrance, we also continue to support Holocaust education initiatives in communities from coast to coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the truth of the Holocaust will live on in Canada, and we will do our part to preserve the memory of what happened. Part of that is honoring the survivors and the victims and listening to the survivors and cherishing their stories and their memories. The years may come and go, but we will forever remember those who were murdered and honor the survivors so that this never happens again. Thank you. Merci beaucoup.
Thank you, Minister. Ensuite, j'aimerais inviter le chef de l'opposition officielle, l'honorable Pierre Paulièvre, s'il vous plaît. Shalom. Bonjour. Thank you all for being here today. <clears throat> today, we honor the lost, celebrate the victims, and condemn the perpetrators of the most comprehensive act of evil in the history of our world, the Holocaust. In particular, we commemorate the liberation of Auschwitz and Birkenau. Every year, a group of survivors, their family and supporters, participate in something called the March of the Living. I was honored about a decade ago to march with them. It's a march from the very first concentration camp, Auschwitz, to the most deadly death camp, Birkenau. Every year, the march becomes more difficult as the survivors grow in age. On arrival, I saw the prolific evidence of the evil carried out there, of the prosthetic limbs that were ripped off of the people coming in and piled up in random rooms, spectacles torn off people's faces, sheared hair that is still piled there uh, six, seven feet high, instruments of torture that are on dis obscene display, from Auschwitz, we, war we march towards Birkenau, a death camp. And en route, we arrive at that infamous door, that infamous gate with the train tracks through it. And we walked, and there are the barracks of wood that still stand where people were crowded, waiting their ultimate fate. Birkenau was not just a concentration camp, it was a death camp. There was no way out alive, except for those who were finally liberated on this anniversary. As you walk in, as we walked in, a beautiful cantor sang a psalmily in Hebrew, Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. And we were truly walking through the valley with the, with the barracks on both sides and the people walking right through it. But in that moment, as ugly as the events we were commemorating was an incredible hope that the survivors who were still there, at the family members of the lost, who took little stones and put them on top of bigger rocks as part of the Jewish tradition at cemeteries, which is to say, we love you, we remember you, we haven't forgotten you. And the fluttering Israeli flag with its beautiful Star of David waved in the sky as a mark of triumph of good over evil. In all of this, I was shaken and touched, but the moment that brought me most uncontrollably to tears is when I learned that there's actually a place there called Canada. You see, a few decades earlier, the Laurier government had advertised all over Europe, of a land of great plenty that people should be urged to come and immigrate to. And so when the Nazis stole the most valuable belongings of the incoming prisoners, they decided they would put it, they would put those treasures in a building named after a land of great treasure. And in a sinister and cruel way, when they assigned prisoners to go and work in that building, sorting those riches, they would say to them, you're going to Canada today. Can you imagine the number of people who died dreaming of coming to Canada? We made it here. That puts on us an obligation to live up to this incredible privilege. And that means we must fight every day the kind of evil that led to the Holocaust. We must speak out in every way against anti-Semitism. We must ensure that our government never again gives contracts or funds to anti-Semitic groups. Our government must condemn 
the anti-Semitic and genocidal regime in Tehran. We must speak up against the United Nations for singling out the State of Israel and demand that Israel have the right to live in security and peace as a Jewish state. And we must condemn Holocaust denial. I was so proud of one of my own conservative MPs who first proposed banning Holocaust denial. And we must, every time we hear these utterances of hatred and anti-Semitism, speak out strongly and unequivocally against them. When we do that, and only then, will we live up to the privilege and the honor it is for us to live here as Canadians. Let us join arms, all of us, condemn hatred and stand against it in, f in favor of freedom and liberty and equality for all. Thank you very much. Never again. Merci, Monsieur Polièvre. Artur Wilczynski is Canada's former ambassador to Norway. He is currently the head of delegation to the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Please welcome Artur Wilczynski. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister, Ministers, Leader of the Opposition, Ambassadors, Excellencies. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. The legacy I inherit is an obligation to remember members of my family who died at the hands of the Nazis and honor the resilience of those who survived. Nous avons tous l'obligation de nous souvenir des horreurs du passé, des luttes des survivants et des effets persistants de l'Holocauste, le meurtre de 6 millions d'hommes, de femmes et d'enfants parce qu'ils étaient juifs. Nous vivons aujourd'hui une montée sans précédent de l'antisémitisme. Les crimes haineux contre les Juifs au Canada font partie de notre réalité. À Ottawa, les enfants et les enseignants juifs sont pris pour cible dans les écoles. Les fonctionnaires fédéraux continuent de cacher leur identité juive par peur de harcèlement. Symbols of the Holocaust, yellow stars of David on victims, and swastikas worn by perpetrators are used to complain about public health measures or to demonize the state of Israel. We must draw lessons from, not comparisons to, the Holocaust. We must build a future based on every human being's inherent dignity and worth. As a Jew born in Poland, whose family also endured totalitarian communism, as a gay man, it is my obligation to remember all victims of Nazism. Roma and Sinti peoples, persons with disabilities, political dissidents, Poles, gay men, and millions of other victims of Nazi terror. Aujourd'hui, les valeurs démocratiques sont confrontées à des défis sans précédent. La démocratie est menacée. La vérité est attaquée. L'histoire de l'Holocauste est niée ou minimisée. L'antisémitisme reprend de l'ampleur. Nous devons agir. As we stand here at the National Holocaust Monument, one that looks toward the Peace Tower on Parliament Hill, may we commit to remember our past, to draw lessons from it. May we work in unity to defend democracy, to counter anti-Semitism in all forms of hate, and build a just future for all. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Wilczynski. Next, I'm pleased to welcome Israel's ambassador to Canada, His Excellency Ronan Hoffman. Good morning. I'm so honored to be here at the National Holocaust Monument, alongside the Right Honorable Prime Minister Trudeau, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Ministers Elder McGregor, the mayor, fellow ambassadors, dignitaries, community leaders, and of course, our inspiring and resilient Holocaust survivors. I would also like to acknowledge Ms. Annette Wildgoose, the National Holocaust Monument Committee, and CJA for their efforts in putting on this important ceremony. Every year, International Holocaust Remembrance Day prompts a sense of solemn reflection. It is a time to reflect on how far the Jewish people, 
and the State of Israel have come and overcome the tragedies and atrocities of eight years ago. With anti-Semitism so casually thrown around in pop culture, on university campuses, and online, robust Holocaust education and commemorations like these have perhaps never been more important. It has been 90 years since the Third Reich came to power and ultimately took the lives of two-thirds of the Jews living on the European continent. Oftentimes, the sheer magnitude of these numbers, the six million Jews killed in the Holocaust, can make us lose sight of how each father, mother, sister, and brother killed was an individual who had hopes, dreams, and a meaningful life. The staggering fact that the worldwide Jewish population has not fully recovered to the pre-war numbers demonstrates how Israel, the only Jewish state on earth, stands as a beacon of safety, prosperity, and cultural revitalization. Israel will continue to promote Holocaust education and will always call out Holocaust denial and distortion. Israel will always stand up against anti-Semitism, no matter who utters it. And when regimes around the world call for the destruction of the only Jewish state, Israel vows to remember the lessons of the Holocaust and take it seriously. On this day, we mourn all the lives taken by the Nazi regime, vow to never forget and to never allow this to happen again. Thank you. Toda Raba, Excellency. Our next speaker is the United States Ambassador to Canada, His Excellency David Cohen. Ambassador Cohen, would you please come to the podium? Thank you, Lawrence, and thank you to the National Holocaust Monument Committee for inviting me to join with you this morning. I feel privileged to be the, here this morning alongside the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, the Mayor, and my diplomatic colleagues. It's an honor to be back at this monument on this solemn day. Last year, this was one of my first public appearances after arriving in Ottawa. It also was about 20 degrees colder than it is today. And rather than this very pretty and pleasant sprinkling of snow, we literally sat through a blizzard where about five inches of snow accumulated on the ground during the course of the program. Today marks the 78th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. On this day, we remember not only the six million Jews who died during the Holocaust, but also the millions of others, both Jews and non-Jews, who were victims of Nazi persecution. As a Jew and as an American, the memory of the Holocaust has helped define my worldview. I trace my personal commitment to tolerance and equality as a direct byproduct of the horrors of the Holocaust. Heeding Elie Wiesel's words in his haunting poem, Night, Never shall I forget. But this act of remembrance cannot be a passive one. When there are outbreaks of anti-Semitism or other forms of hatred and intolerance, we must all stand up and say, this is not what we stand for. As President Biden has said, silence is complicity. Nor can our act of remembrance be limited to only one day or confined to this sacred monument. We must carry it with us every day, wherever we go. And we must use our remembrance of the Holocaust to heal the world and create a better future for us all. When I get depressed by the too many examples of hatred and intolerance that we see every day in Canada and in the United States, I try to look to signs of hope. This year, in the midst of too many acts of anti-Semitism in Canada and the United States, 
one of those signs of hope appeared. Some of us were approached by Mrs. McPhail's seventh grade class from St. Dominic's Catholic School in Oakville, Ontario. These wonderful young students asked us to participate in a social media campaign they were organizing. They wanted all of us to take a picture of ourselves and to embed it in a graphic that reads, never again, and then post it online. I know Ambassador Hoffman has already posted his picture, and I posted mine yesterday. These young people are the future of Canada. They're the future of our world, and they have not forgotten. They are not being silent. They are not letting others be silent. And it is because of them that I am optimistic about our future. Today then, let us not only remember the Holocaust, but let us also rededicate ourselves to fight anti-Semitism and racism and renew our commitment to confront hate and divisiveness. And let us strive for the day when bigotry will be replaced by tolerance, demonization by compassion, and hatred by love. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Cohen. I'm pleased to welcome our next speaker, the German Ambassador to Canada, Sabine Sparwasser. Thank you so much for having me here, having me speak on this solemn day. There are two fundamental questions that for me as a German will never be fully answered. The most important one, how could a cultured, educated, civilized nation, my country, descend into such murderous hate and barbarism of the Holocaust? No historic subject has been studied more than the Holocaust. Yet, I will go to my deathbed not understanding why my fellow Germans turned so brutally against their neighbors, their doctors, their shopkeepers, their teachers <laughs> down the street. The second question to ask is, what can we do to stop anything like this from ever happening again? We are assembled here today to answer this. We need to remember, we need to teach history, and we need to learn its lessons. But most of all, we need to know in our countries, in our communities, let ours be empathic societies, communities that celebrate diversity, that focus on our common humanity rather than exaggerate our dif differences. And also, let us follow the example that so many Holocaust survivors have set, who have turned terrible trauma into an inspiring commitment for a world without hate. They lived through the worst and became the very best we can be. Thank you, Ambassador. Up next, Shimon Koffler Fogel. Mr. Koffler Fogel is the Chief Executive Officer for the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced the appointment of Canada's first Special Advisor on Combating Islamophobia. And that follows on the heels, as was noted earlier, of creating a position of a special envoy for Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism. Friends, there are those who look at these initiatives and they roll their eyes, either in dismay, in surrender, or cynicism. And they discount them as almost empty efforts in the face of growing hate anti-Semitism, racism, and discrimination. And they wonder at how we can reconcile the state of the world today with that battle cry, never again, that you've heard cited this morning 
frequently. As a child of survivors, I always grew up thinking never again meant that we would eradicate that kind of hate. But the other day I had an epiphany in two parts. And the first part is that never again was not a commitment to end hatred, but to battle against hatred. And when you reflect on the undertakings of our political leadership here in Canada, the adoption of the IRA definition of anti-Semitism, the very anti-racism secretariat that was established at Heritage, the appointment of special envoys, the criminalization of Holocaust denial, all of the different efforts to challenge the persecution of the Uyghur or the Rohingya or the Yazidi, the determined effort to push back against tyranny that is confronting Ukraine. All of these efforts fulfill the promise of never again. Because what never again really means is that we will never again be silent. We will never again be indifferent. We will never again be dismissive. That in the face of all of the efforts to marginalize the other, to erase the lived experience of different groups, to demonize, delegitimize, and persecute will not go unanswered. We live up to the promise of never again. And then there was the second part of that epiphany the other day. When I reflect on this annual ritual of remembering the Holocaust, I used to think that it was just about sanctifying the memory of six million Jews and so many millions of others. But looking at the experience of Jews today, the frightening spike in anti-Semitism, I am reminded of the words, what begins with the Jews never ends with the Jews. And while it may always be the Jews, at some moment in time, every marginalized group is a Jew. And so when we gather today, every year, what we are doing is not only memorializing those who have perished, we are reminding ourselves that this day serves as an annual opportunity to reaffirm an oath, the oath of never again. May God strengthen our resolve and may he bless our efforts to make never again true. Thank you. Thank you, Shimon. I feel privileged at this point to invite one of our Holocaust survivors here today to come up and speak. Dr. Agnes Klein was born in Brasov, Romania. Elle était enfant pendant la guerre et a survécu dans une ferme en Roumanie. Dr. Klein, if you please. Le très honorable Monsieur Justin Trudeau, uh, l'honorable chef de l'opposition, Monsieur Pierre Poilievre, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, everybody who's gathered here together today in, commemora in commemoration of the Holocaust, I'm going to throw away part of what I had prepared to speak because I need to tell you why I'm here. I never thought of myself as a survivor. My husband was a concentration camp survivor, and he never wanted to speak of his experiences. However, current circumstances 
and increasing hate have forced me and have made me and have induced me to speak up. Aujourd'hui, il y a des gens qui portent des signes. We remember, nous nous sommes non. On a beau dire qu'on se souvient, mais la meilleure manière de démontrer notre fidélité à la mémoire des 6 millions et à éviter l'haine dans le futur, c'est de se souvenir de, de nom. Chacun nom que nous connaissons est de notre mieux. And yes, as long as we remember their names, they continue to be alive in some ways because it reminds us that those were people who loved and laughed contributed to society, were generous, courageous, and resilient. We remember our ancestors, those who we lost, have now joined their numbers and left us with a legacy that we should never forget. And that thing that we should never forget is to fight against hate, fight against anti-Semitism, and any other form of hate. They also left us many stories There may be some that are still left untold, including where members of my family were involved. Those who perpetrated this genocide in the last days before the liberation of the camps and one to two days continuing counting though that 600 surviving women on the ship off the coast of Riga in Latvia. They took it out to sea and blew it up. 600 dead in one second. Those and the stories we still don't know of must be discovered to make the memory just that more poignant and re real and teach us and continue to teach us lessons. Stories do really tell the cruelty, inhumanity, and the final stance of revenge of the Nazis as they saw their war being lost. In honor of those who are no longer with us, we owe it to them all to collect as many of those stories and names as we can and to remember. Nous nous souviendrons. Toujours. Thank you so much, Dr. Klein, for your moving and insightful remarks. Andrea Friedman is our next speaker. She is the Chief Executive Officer of the Jewish Federation of Ottawa. Andrea. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs once said, Jews survived all the expulsions, persecutions, and prog pogroms the centuries in which we were regarded as a pariah people, even the Holocaust itself, because we never gave up the faith that one day we would be free to live as Jews without fear. And today, too many Jews are living in fear. Too many in Canadian society have not properly learned the lessons of the Shoah. Elie Wiesel once said, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. And it's frightening at a time when courageous survivors like Dr. Klein, and thank you so much for braving the cold here today. When, when survivors like Dr. Klein share their pain and their story, too many of our fellow citizens remain indifferent and silent. Too many continue to treat anti-Semitism as a lesser form of hate or act as if Jews are less deserving of support than other vulnerable communities. And this is why International Holocaust Remembrance Day is so critically important. Why it matters that landmark buildings around the world, including for the first time the Peace Tower, right here in our nation's capital, are illuminated in yellow to remember those murdered in the Holocaust and as a public commitment to fight anti-Semitism. This is why it matters that the political leadership of our city, of our great country, along with ambassadors from the around the world, are here today, and thank you so much for not remaining silent. And yet, sadly, even with what previous speakers, even with what the Prime Minister has, has, has told us has been done, and it's all wonderful, sadly, it's still not enough. Anti-Semitism has found fertile ground in our society. Children experience it in schools. University campuses are too often not safe spaces for Jews. 
And Jews are dedicated Jewish public servants are subjected to hate in their workplace as occurs in other, other workplaces as well. Today we remember and we mourn the victims of the Shoah. We reflect on the one million children brutally murdered at the hands of the Nazis and wonder how much better our world could be if they had been given a chance at life, if they had been given a chance to contribute to science and medicine, to the arts, to sports, to politics, and to education. And through our tears, we fight against this normalization of anti-Semitism. We fight with every tool at our disposal, every weapon in our arsenal, mandatory Holocaust education, closing the legal, legal gap on hate speech, and fighting online height and radical, radicalization. Make no mistake about it, this is a battle. A battle for the very fabric of society, what we aspire for our city, for our province, for our country. And it is our responsibility to do this for those murdered and for those who survived the Shoah. We must do this for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren, and for their grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Et maintenant, veuillez accueillir le maire d'Ottawa, Mark Sutcliffe. Mayor Sutcliffe. Merci et bonjour tout le monde. I want to thank the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs and the National Holocaust Monument Committee for this opportunity to stand united on this solemn anniversary. And on behalf of the people of Ottawa, on this International Day of Remembrance, I join you in commemorating the victims of the Holocaust and in honoring the survivors. We must remember, yesterday I, I posed for a picture with Andrea holding a sign that said, we must remember, and I've been thinking about that ever since. And I, I for myself, I feel like we should add another word to that to say, we must remember. We must always remember. No matter how much time passes, we must remember. No matter what else happens in the world, we must remember. No matter how much the forces of hatred persist, we must remember. We must always remember. It is our duty, it is our obligation, it is our responsibility. And it's cold today, but I am warmed by the hope that I've heard today from the other speakers. Thank you for all your words, especially Dr. Agnes Klein. I want to honor all of the survivors who are here today and the descendants of survivors and the members of Ottawa's Jewish community and everyone who is working so hard to eradicate anti-Semitism in our communities, including right here in Ottawa, where regrettably, tragically, it persists. Today we honor the memory of Holocaust victims, and I want to thank our government leaders, our diplomatic re representatives, and our, the members of our community for standing together, for joining together. Merci à toutes et à tous de votre présence. This is a profound day. It's a profound day of remembrance to honor the victims of this horrible tragedy and to teach others, especially young people, about the perils of fascism and extremism. Intolerance can take many forms, but it is always rooted in fear and ignorance. Bien qu'elle puisse prendre de nombreuses formes différentes, l'intolérance découle toujours de la peur et de l'ignorance. Today and forever, we remember. We must remember. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mayor Sutcliffe. Our final speaker of the morning is Rabbi Eden Sher from Congregation Machziki Hadas here in Ottawa. Rabbi Sher is also a member of the National Holocaust Monument Committee. After the rabbi finishes his remarks, I'd like to invite the following people to come up and light a candle. Prime Minister Trudeau, Ambassador Hoffman, Joel Diener, Dr. Agnes Klein, Flora Love Katz, and Rabbi Sher. Rabbi, we'll start with your remarks.
I visited Auschwitz five years ago, and it was a visceral, life-changing encounter. I think this is true for all who visit that site. Perhaps it's the gas chambers, seeing the scratch marks, the fingernail scratch marks of the precious victims who are desperately trying to get out. It's imagining the paralyzing fear, the screams, the prayers, the cries of Shema Yisrael, and then the silence. Perhaps it's the shoes, the tiny little shoes, the same size shoes of my little uh, baby girl back at home, the shoes of the Nazis' youngest victims, piles of them, representing one of the 1.5 million children who were murdered in the Holocaust. Or perhaps it's the sheer enormity, the sheer size of this death camp. It's the size of a small city, a hell on earth designed precisely to murder over 1 million Jews in a few short years. The equivalent of another Jewish community, flourishing and vibrant, murdered every single day. But something that you may miss is the sign when you first enter. The words, that terrible, cynical lie that greeted the arrivals. Arbeit macht frei. Work sets you free. Prisoners at Auschwitz had been ordered to make that sign, and they courageously took a stand. If you look carefully, you'll see that that B, the B in the first word, is actually upside down. What might appear to be a mere piece of design was actually a daring act of defiance, a silent message to the world. All is not right here. Something is upside down and brutally so. But the world did not listen. That upside down bee stands as a call from the grave, the call of those defiant and courageous prisoners of Auschwitz to us standing here on January 7th, 2023. It is a declaration that all is not right here and every single one of us has the responsibility to act. It is the inaction and indifference, that same inaction and indifference of the world so many years ago What's well, the inaction and that indifference of the individual that makes it possible for evil to triumph. And with skyrocketing hate and quickly metastasizing anti-Semitism, the message of the upside down bee is perhaps more important now than it has been for a very long time. Before we um, ask those that are invited to light a candle and we continue with the Jewish memorial prayer, I conclude with some of the words, the concluding words of Canada's special envoy on preserving Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism, the words that Erwin Kotler sent to be read today. And these are his words. I close with the word to Holocaust survivors, for you endured the worst of inhumanity and somehow found in the resources of your own humanity the courage to go on, to rebuild your lives as you built the communities in which you have made an enduring contribution. I regret that I cannot be with you in person today, commemorating the many lives lost in the unspeakable horrors of the Holocaust, while, enduring, while honoring the enduring lessons that the survivors continue to share with us. And so may this day be not only an act of remembrance, which it is, but a remembrance to act on behalf of our Jewish peoplehood and our common humanity. At this point, we will ask all of those to please come up and light a candle.
At this point, we ask everyone has already risen for uh, Dr. Klein will lead us in the Kaddish, the Jewish memorial prayer. Yitkadar ve yitkadash meyraba. Amen. Ve'al ma'ad ibrahiru tey, b'nai amich malchut tey, v'chay yechon u'biyom yechon u'chay yedachol b'it Yisrael v'agala u'bizman kari imru. Amen. Yachish meyraba v'mubarach l'alam u'lolmei olmaya. Yit barach ve yishtabach ve yit ba'ar ve yit roma ve yit nase ve yit adar ve yit ale ve yit alal shemei de kudusha leila leilchata ve shirata shushbechata ve nechemata ta amiran ve alma ve imru amen. Yehei shmei rabba ve barach ha'im ba'alinu ve al kol yisrael ve imru amen. שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. Ladies and gentlemen, we are nearing the end of our ceremony. A special thank you, a great appreciation to Dr. Klein for being here today, making that connection with the past. We are so honored that you were able to attend. Before we sing O Canada and Hatikva, I'd like to ask all of today's speakers to please remain behind at the end for a photo with the Prime Minister. Adam Mosco will now lead us in the singing of the two national anthems. O Canada, our home and native land, True patriot love in all of us command. Car ton bras se porte le feu, il se porte la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée de fleurions exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Yehudi o mia, ul fatem 
Thank you, Adam. And with that, we conclude today's ceremony marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Merci à nos survivants de l'Holocauste, à nos conférenciers invités et à tous ceux qui ont participé. The organizers are grateful to all of you for attending. For those who brought flags, please pick them up as you exit the monument. Merci, thank you to Darabah, Ashinam Dank, E Miigwech. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>